it's happening. Hey guys, my name is Miranda and welcome to my universe. Today I am going to start Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas because it's about time that I started this series. So I haven't started reading it yet, but before we begin, first of all, this video is going to be totally spoilery. All of my vlogs tend to be really spoilery. Second of all, my life is kind of insane right now, so I have no idea how long it's going to take me to read this series. There are seven or eight books in the series. I only own the first two, but I do have access to the rest of them through my library, so I'm definitely still going to read the entire series. My goal right now is to finish this series in three weeks, so have three vlogs up for you guys, but I have no idea if that's actually realistic or not, just because I am starting my second year of college tomorrow so you'll be able to see me suffer as well. And on top of that, this weekend at my work, I am actually going to be trained to become a waitress. So I'm really excited about that, but I do know that it's going to stress me out a lot. So probably less time to read because I'm going to be trying to memorize our menu and memorize everything else and whatnot. So with school and work kind of being all over the place right now, I really don't know how much time I'm going to be able to dedicate to this series, but I am starting it. I'm really excited. I kind of just needed a fantasy series that I can just kind of read and escape into during this time in my life because everything is crazy. How many times can I say that? <laughs> but anyways, uh, believe it or not, even though I've been on booktube for so long and I have a ton of friends who read, I really don't know a lot about this series. I have like no idea what the plot is, so we will all learn together. All right, so I am on chapter eight currently um, and I have finally <laughs> gathered what this book is about. So we follow around Selena, our main character. She is an assassin. Basically, she was kind of like banished into the minds of the kingdom so she hasn't exactly been living the best life and hasn't been living under the best conditions for the past few years and one day she is summoned to the king's castle and she enters this competition in order to win her freedom i'm pretty sure she has to kill or defeat whatever same thing. 23 other assassins in order to win her freedom and become the king's champion. That's what she would be called, the king's champion. She would basically be doing the king's dirty work, but she would be able to live in the castle and she would actually get paid for it also. So anyway, quite interesting. Very different from all of the other fantasy series that are out there, so I'm really excited. I have no idea how I feel about Dorian, who's the prince. I've heard a lot about him. I feel like he probably is one of the love interests in this book, but I don't know how I feel about him yet. I just haven't gathered a lot from him, so we'll see as we go on. All right, boys and girls and every single person watching this. Throne of Glass. I finished it. I really liked this one. It was very different from all the other dystopian kind of young adult series that I've read. I cannot explain to you whose side I am. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -boo. I am losing track of my words. Hello. I cannot even begin to describe whose team I'm on when it comes to the boys in her life because I like Dorian, but I also really like Cole. Is that his name? Is that how you pronounce his name? I have no idea. Kale. 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 Kale? Kale. That's really awkward. Kale! I really like him too. Like, I really like him. He's really sweet and Dorian is just kind of, I mean, mm, I don't know. I We haven't really gotten to know each of them very well, so I'm not a very good judge of their character at the moment. But I'm sure as we go on in the series, I will find out more about these boys and I will be able to actually form an opinion on them. I will say that this series is a bit predictable. I knew that she was going to become the king's champion. Like that didn't come as a surprise to me. Um, what did come to a surprise to me was the fact that she was poisoned. That part made me so, I was so mad at that, but she fought through it. And she made it through. And uh, can we talk about Cain as well? He pissed me off. The fact that he literally was summoning demons in order for the demons to kill off his competitors so that he can get their strength. 
that's a no from me, buddy. But anyway, um, I did my research and looked up what order I should read Throne of Glass in because I naturally picked up Crown of Midnight and thought that I should read that. But I actually found out that all of the short stories came out before Crown of Midnight did. So I think I'm going to read all of the series in publication order. I probably will most likely not talk a lot in this vlog about the short stories just because they're short stories and I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily need to read them unless I have specific thoughts that I think I need to share then I will. Otherwise the next time you see me will probably be when I pick up Crown of Midnight. All right, let's find good lighting in this place, shall we? I put some blue ras bang in a wine glass to make myself feel fancy. It's really old. <laughs> Update on my journey reading the Throne of Glass series. I'm on the last short story in the Assassin's Blade. I just finished The Assassin in the Underworld though, and that is by far my favorite short story so far anyways. I am in love with Sam. He is so sweet, so innocent, and how he's in love with Selena. I just, I love him so, so much. But it sucks because I know something happens to him because in the first book she's like, well, there used to be this guy. So I don't know if he dies, if something horrible happens and they get separated, if they get in a huge fight. Like, I don't know what what's gonna go down, but like, I love their relationship right now, don't want it to end, but it's just the anticipation is killing me. I really like getting her backstory, actually. I think that out of all of the short story collections I've read, this one is by far one of my favorites because I feel like a lot of the time authors just write short stories just to make more money and they really don't contribute to the story, but this these stories really give you a lot of background information, explain a lot, shed a lot of insight in Selena's life. And so I'm really enjoying that. I like how there is actually a purpose to them. And yeah, that's my mini update for you. All right, buttercups. I lit a fall candle. There's me, hello. Literally, it's the small things in life that make me happy. Anyways, let's about, what was I trying to say? Let's talk about Crown of Midnight, shall we? This is technically the second book in Throne of Glass, but it is the third one that I'm reading. So we're just gonna call it number three. I'm only 20 pages in, so I'm not very far, but I just wanna talk about the fact that she is literally not even doing her job. <laughs> she gets hired as the king's assassin because she won the competition, right? And she doesn't even kill anybody. Like, I mean, props to her, kudos to her. The fact that she is even able to get away with that is so mind blowing. I'm just kind of confused because she's been super cutthroat this entire time. So then why all of a sudden does she actually care about people? <laughs> like, I know that sounds kind of harsh, but like, it's true. She literally has killed so many people up until this point. So like what made her stop? Why is she now deciding to save everybody instead of actually kill them? Like whenever she's assigned a person, she literally goes to their house, goes wherever they are at, but she doesn't actually kill them. She gives them an opportunity to escape. And if they choose to escape, they just have to change their name, run far, far away. You know the gist, it's not like Selena at all, but I'm glad, like I'm, I'm surprised, but it's a good surprise because that's something that I would do. I would not be able to actually kill these people. But the fact that she is an assassin and now she's not, even though she has the highest rank an assassin could have, my brain hurts. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, as you can tell from the date, or is it on this side, this side? I'm not sure. I'm basically taking this slow and steady. That's how it's going. I'm really enjoying it though. So Crown of Midnight, I took the sleeve off because sleeves annoy me sometimes. I'm a little past halfway. Kale is definitely my favorite, okay? I see why people like Dorian. I mean, he's royalty. He has this magic that has randomly awoken within him. But right now, I love Kale, okay? I'm kind of really upset that Nahemia is dead. Really 
even more upset that Selena decided to go off on Kale because it's obviously not his fault. I don't know why she's so mad at him and so determined to kill him. Like what, what how in that how does that connect in your brain? Like literally just 2 seconds ago you were in love with him and now you almost put a dagger in his heart. Like what? What? Sorry. Romeo and Juliet could never. Wow, wow, wow. So much has happened. Okay. Okay. Um, listen, let's talk. Okay. I don't, my brain right now, what is going on? Can I speak? So I have about 40 pages left of this book. Kind of still wanted to pop in here though and update you because right now something insane is happening. <sighs> There's so much. There's the secret passageway underneath the library that basically leads to the king's chambers, like this area nobody knows about. And the king trapped this creature there. Don't know if it used to be a human, pretty sure it used to be a human, but now it's like a crazed thing. And it has escaped before, but it has never killed anyone. But when Selena goes down there, because she discovered all of it, you know, basically almost dies from it. Okay, dogs, hello. It almost kills her until Dorian shows up and helps her fight it. And that's the night that she finds out that Dorian has magic because Dorian tried to seal a door off with magic. In the midst of all of this, she basically finds out about these three ward keys that when they are used together, they can open the gates of like all of the different dimensions. So Selena finds out that the king has at least one. She doesn't know if he has multiple, but she knows he doesn't have all three because that's technically how you could control the entire world. But that is how the king ended up getting rid of all magic except his own. Thus, Dorian, his son, also has magic. But he used one of the ward keys to control the magic in his realm and to get rid of most of it. And so that's also how he was able to take over more land and gain control and more power. So he's basically pretty twisted, pretty evil. Um, but Selena opens up a portal to see Nehemia and like, bro. <laughs> Nehemia basically is all like, Selena, you shouldn't have opened up this portal you literally will never do it again otherwise you won't survive it i really like it like i really like this story it gets so complex as it goes on i really like dorian oh my gosh like i'm just he's oh my gosh like not even as a love interest just as a character he is so complex like he doesn't know what he wants he doesn't know what he's looking for he's just trying to figure out his position as the prince but also as all of these other things he's so lost in so many ways i love him i love kale but like dorian i can see I can see why people are all hyped about him, you know? I will pop on here again and let you guys know how I feel about the entire book. <laughs> Selena is a fairy? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just so confused. How is she human and then she can change into fae? Like, how does... <laughs> what? I'm sure I'll learn more. I literally got to the chapter where she turns into Faye in order to save Kale from the monster thing that she accidentally, you know, summoned with the portal. I'm literally on like the last 15 pages, so I guess we'll see. Oh my gosh, what did I just read? <laughs> so I finished Crown of Midnight. So, Selena is the lost queen? Hello? She literally has kept all of these secrets from everybody. <laughs> how, Selena? How? How did- how? This book was so twisty. Like, I can't even begin to describe how many twists there were. First book was pretty predictable. This one, not so much. I loved it so much. I'm- I'm too invested in this series now. Like, 
Like, you can't just leave me with that cliffhanger. All right, well, that will be all for this vlog because I need this vlog up by tonight. Um, but you will definitely see more from this series. Might take me another few weeks to get out another vlog, but I'm definitely enjoying this series and I know a lot of people, like this is a very popular series. So hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts on the first three books ish. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. Please be safe, make good choices, and I'll definitely see you next time to continue on with this journey. <laughs> Bye!